Hi Assets, it's nice we meet again. Today, we are going to continue the discussion about Step 5, Adjusting Journal Entries. To watch the previous part, just click the link below. Now, if you are ready, let's begin. For today's topic, we are going to discuss adjusting journal entries related to accruals. Let's start with accrued salaries. This is the example. Entities pay their employees at regular intervals. It can be weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. Weekly payrolls are usually made on Fridays for a five-day work week or Saturdays for a six-day week. Anytime catering services pay salaries every two Saturdays. The office assistant and account executive were paid salaries on December 13 and 27. At month end, the employees have worked for three days, December 29, 30, and 31, beyond the last period. Meaning, nabigyan na sila ng sweldo noong December 13 and 27. However, Yung 3 days from December 29 to 31 ay hindi pa nababayaran ng company sa kanila. Now, here is the transaction. Each of the employees' rate is 15,600 pesos per month or 600 pesos per day. That is 15,600 divided by 26 days. The expense to be accrued is 3,600 pesos from 600 times 3 days na hindi pa bayad times 2 employees, the office assistant and the account executive. The adjusted journal entries would be debit salaries expense 3,600 and credit salaries payable 3,600. In this case, salaries are recognized as expense kahit na hindi pa nababayaran ng company. Next is accrued revenue. Suppose that anytime catering services agreed to arrange a rush but simple birthday party in the afternoon of December 31. The entity intended to charge fees of 10,600 pesos for the services which is earned but unbilled. Again, which is earned but unbilled. Ibig sabihin na perform na niya ang service pero hindi pa siya nababayaran ni customer. In these transactions, your journal entry would be Debit Accounts Receivable 10,600 and Credit Consulting Revenues 10,600. Lastly, Accrual for Uncollectible Accounts. Hindi may iwasan na ang isang business ay hindi mabayada ni customer. Kaya naglalaan siya ng estimated allowance sa lahat ng kanyang receivables o mga pautang na sa tingin niya ay hindi na niya makokolekta pa. And that is what we call the allowance for uncollectible accounts. Let's take a look at this situation. Assume that an entity made credit sales of 1,100,000 pesos in 2019 and prior experience indicates an expected 1% average uncollectible accounts rate based on credit sales. When we say credit sales, ito yung mga napagbentahan pero hindi pa nababayadan. Then yung 1% of these credit sales, ito naman ang estimated allowance for uncollectible accounts. Ibig sabihin, ipinagpalagay ng business na 1% of 1,100,000 ay hindi na niya makokolekta pa. With respect to accruals, the allowance for uncollectible accounts is also recognized as expense dahil hindi na nga makokolekta pa. So the journal entry would be debit uncollectible accounts expense 11,000 which is 1% of 1,100,000 and credit allowance for uncollectible accounts 11,000. 
what if, based on the assumption of business, part of the allowance for uncollectible accounts are actually uncollectible? Ibig sabihin, sigurado na ang business na hindi na niya talaga makukolekta pa. Don't be confused. Yung nauna, the allowance for uncollectible accounts is just an assumption or estimation lamang ng business na may possibility na hindi na niya makukolekta. In this current situation, siguradong hindi na niya makukolekta pa. So here is the example. Throughout the accounting period, when there is a positive evidence that a specific account is definitely uncollectible, the appropriate amount is written off against the contra account. For example, if a 1,500 peso receivable were considered uncollectible, that amount would be written off as follows. Debit, allowance for uncollectible accounts, 1,500, and credit, accounts receivable, 1,500. Meaning, nabawasan pareho ang allowance for uncollectible accounts at accounts receivable dahil hindi na kayang kolektahin pa ang 1,500 pesos. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for listening. This is Sir Jomari Mangiat leaving you a message. In a life full of liabilities, always remember to become an asset. If you don't want to be an asset, don't try to be everyone's liability. Have a nice day, assets!